Someone want to grab the door for me back there? Perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Melody Lay. I'm a pen test manager with the Government of Ontario. And I'm really just here to introduce our next speaker to you. This is Jacob Kaluzny, and he's going to talk to us about abusing voice biometric solutions. So let's take it away, Jacob. Hi. Uh, so my topic for today is uh, penetration testing of voice biometric solution. Uh, has anybody actually used voice biometric authentication for your bank or, all right, one person? Well, it's becoming popular now. So before I start, I'm going to do a quick demo of how powerful this little fairy microphone is. So only the volunteer from the back rows, I think like it's around 10, 15 meters to that point. Will, will somebody from the back row just say, I need like random number, one, two, three, four, five, my voice is my password. Can you do it? One, two, three, four, five. And my voice is my password? My voice is my password. Great. So yeah, this microphone wouldn't even catch from five meters. <laughs> but you just told us your password, and you cannot change it because that's your voice, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a security consultant at Demis and Link Security in Sydney. Uh, and I recently moved from Europe, where I was basically doing application security, payment systems, uh, mostly for the financial industry, right? And sometimes I do have interesting projects. Uh, this may be bypassing JS-based malware detection, uh, man in the browser malware, uh, reverse engineering of proprietary network protocols, some enterprise solutions like BData based on Hadoop uh, or HBus, and currently voice biometrics. So, the research started in back in 2015 when I was testing few solutions. Uh, and some of them were implemented in IVR channel, some of them in the mobile application. It was extremely interesting and easily underscoped. Now I have some more data, some more tools, and I want to share it with you. So I'm going to present today some ge general challenges uh, when testing non-deterministic systems based on some artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, and the systematic approach to pen testing voice biometric solution in short time. I'm not saying that voice biometric is a bad idea. I'm not saying it's a good idea either. So uh, yeah, voice biometric becomes, becomes popular. So if you look for voice biometric patents on Google, there are around 1,000 patents uh, for generally voice biometrics technology. Uh, is, it, is it new? Not really. When I looked uh, for risky business number 10, which was in 2007, uh, Patrick was already mentioning voice biometrics, right? And considering security of those solutions. So it's not new. How does it work? To be honest, I don't know. I'm doing a black box test. So basically, the enrollment looks like you, you have to say, my voice is my password, or a different phrase, three times. And then during the authentication, you just say, uh, you usually you enter your customer ID or your mobile app is already paired and then you say my voice is my password and that's all you need. You don't need a password or, or any uh, second factor, right? It should work even, you, even if you're uh, sick, even if you've got a sore throat. It should work even if you get old and it should not work if you record the voice and replay it. So the current state of voice biometrics is that you're calling your IVR channel, you're calling your bank, let's say, or you're using your mobile application. You try to say, my voice is my password. If the system doesn't recognize your voice, you'll be, there will be a fallback to a standard password. And if you don't know, if you don't remember your standard password, it will be a fallback to the IVR and the uh, security questions. So what's your mother's maiden name? If it doesn't work, you, st you can still go to the branch, right? So somebody called that below one factor because you can join multiple factors and, and it doesn't guarantee that, uh, that without knowing your voice or without knowing your password, you won't be able to log in, right? Uh, the system is as secure as, it is, as its weakest link, so currently nobody will focus on voice biometrics because exploiting weak passwords or security questions in the IVR channel, it's much easier than hacking voice biometrics, but it will become popular. Last week, uh, actually, BBC uh, did, a, let's say, a prank on HSBC voice recognition technology. Uh, they basically took twins, and one of them tried to spoof the other. 
Uh, all right, so the basic parameter which describes the quality of voice biometrics is equal error rate, which, which, is the number, which is the value of when the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate is the same. So false, false acceptance is, of course, if, if I'm trying to spoof somebody's voice and it would be a false acceptance. And false rejection if I'm trying to authenticate as myself and it will be rejected, right? And currently, these values are around from 1% to 2%, maybe 4%. So many sources would say that biometric strength of around 1% of this order of magnitude is, is far too low. It's, it's basically basic biometric strength. And we're looking for something like medium or high biometric strength, which the technology, I think, is not mature enough right now. So here are some, uh, public, uh, some public data on false rejection rate and false acceptance rate from one of the vendors. And currently, their, their uh, equal error rate is around 1.5. So is 1% is a lot or not? Basically, all we need to do is, let's say, record 100 voices and try those 100 voices of one, on one person, right? Or the other way, horizontal brute force. So I'm using my voice, and I'm trying to authenticate as uh, each of you, right? I'll show you a quick demo of how easy it is to build a database. Uh, for Authentication. Oh, not this one. Hi, I'm Jacob Kaluse, and I'm a security consultant at Demising Link Security, and welcome to Sydney. Whoops. I'll try to play that one time. Hi, I'm Jacob Kaluse, and I'm... Right, the demo should be here as well. I'm Jacob Kaluzne, and I'm a security consultant at Demising Link Security, and welcome to the survey for science. So it's basically going around the Sydney and asking Just people if they can say my voice is my password. <laughs> no? And surprisingly, I could really get a lot of voice trials. So first I asked if, if I could do a survey. Nobody responded. But then if I uh, introduce myself as a university student and I'm trying to do university research, everybody was keen on telling my voice is my password. Sorry. Doing this university research, and I need to ask people to say, just to say, my voice is my password. My voice is my password. Great. <laughs> did that too? Yes. We did. My I voice is my password. Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Mind if I record? Yeah, it's all good. So, can you just say, my voice is my password? Yeah. My voice is my password. Great. Thanks, mate. Okay. My voice is my password. My voice is my password. Can you a little louder? My voice is my password. Great. Thanks a lot, mate. My voice is my password. My voice is my password. Right. Right. Would you do that too? There were also a few other, but uh, yeah. So it's, it's quite easy to build such a database. And if you've got such a database, uh, you've got the database of around 100 voices. You're almost able to spoof a voice of everybody. Uh, let's go back to that slide. So the, the horizontal brute force is really possible. Uh, how do vendors calculate their equal error rate? So in ideal world, they would like to test 3,000 participants, and half of them will uh, make an enrollment, and half of them will try to spoof it. So in practice, this is from the uh, public information on the vendor website. This is what they do. They just take 300 participants, and they make 5 to 7 normal calls, and 10 to 12 imposter calls. And they, they, they claim that generally, Generally, tests with less than 100 participants are considered anecdotal as, at best. Right. So uh, are you saying that these vendors are introducing innovative modern technology, and they cannot simply take all of their recorded voices and automatically cross-check them all, and they have to do actually real calls while they just can cross-check them all in a database? They've got WAV files. So the real problem with the voice biometrics is that there is a thing called central limit theorem. If we take a voice, it, of course, for voice biometrics purposes, uh, the voice has 20 or 30 parameters, right? Let's take one parameter. Let's take a peak pitch of the voice, right? If we take the whole population 
a lot of people will have average peak pitch, a, a small number of people will have a low peak pitch, and a small number of people will have high peak pitch, right? If this is how they calculate uh, the equal error rate, uh, let's say Morgan Freeman will try, in their test, will try to impersonate Frodo, right? This doesn't make sense. In a real world scenario, Morgan Freeman will, will try to impersonate only Freeman's family. So this is the problem. If, if the attacker is able to choose the voices which he's using for spoofing in a way that he's able to not take the whole population, but just, let's say, 10% of the population, he's able to increase the false acceptance rate, not from 1% to, let's say, 20%. And this is the, the key of this research, that you don't need a lot of voices or a lot of complicated technology rocket science to spoof voice biometrics. It's basically maths, maths, maths which is against them. So uh, yeah, of course, they can keep constant threshold, which means that a high peak pitch spoofer will, will be able to impersonate only few people, but an average peak pitch will be able to spoof a lot of people, and they can keep a const constant force acceptance rate. But in both cases, it is bad. So yeah, <laughs> this is funny. Gender does matter. There are completely different uh, voice uh, characteristics for males and females. And there are different algorithms for voice biometrics. And there are different attacks for males and females, right? Let's do a quick threat modeling on, voice, on pen testing voice biometrics. So we have attacks on the enrollment. But it basically requires that you can man in the middle or record somebody during the enrollment. It's quite complicated. Then we have authentication bypass. We are going to focus on that. Information disclosure. So there are many. So let's say in one bank, there are thousands of voices, 100,000 of voices. What happens if this database leaks? What happens if you can grab those voices, right? Uh, if, if they're keeping the original voices, not the voice prints or something like that. And denial of service. So we'll try to uh, abuse the availability of the system, right? What about auth authentication bypass? There are some vendor approved scenarios which they accept. And this is basically hiring spoofers and uh, sometimes horizontal brute force. That's what they are prepared for. Uh, what else? Well, audio codec exploitation. Wouldn't it be cool to whistle some music and you will get a shell? Mobile API pen test. So if the solution is integrated in the mobile application, you can try to do a man in the middle there. You can try to do exploit the web service or API, which is uh, on the server side. And you can abuse the process. And abusing the process is also the key to hack voice biometrics. I'll show it in a second. You could do speech synthesis. And uh, I hope you didn't expect it that. Uh, basically, there are, there are heaps of companies. Adobe uh, just did the Voco product. There is Google WaveNet. And there is Lyrebird. These are products which allows to record somebody's voice just for a few minutes and then synthesize this voice just like any sentence, saying any sentence. This is cool, but this is basically what requires years of research. They're hiring the best voice recognition scientists. I'm going to show you what can do a security consultant, pen tester, which I'm mostly uh, focused on application security, on web application, on embedded software, on mobile applications. But what can I do with really simple knowledge about voice synthesis? And we can do the replay recording. And this will be the, the focus on, on this presentation. We'll try to record somebody and then do uh, re a replay from the recording, modifying the voice a little bit so that the system doesn't recognize its replay. There is also a sneakers attack. So basically, recording somebody's voice saying different words and reordering them so that it creates uh, anybody uh, who's seen the sneakers film from 1984. Yeah, right. OK. So, there is also one more threat, IoT. So for example, there were these cloud pets, uh, dolls connected to the internet. Uh, somebody hacked them. Uh, it was actually, I think, MongoDB database exposed on the public server. And this voice recorded from, uh, mostly this was kids' voices recorded. Th they leaked. What, happened, what would happen if, in the background, there would be some parents saying, my voice is my password, authenticated to their online banking, one, once it gets popular? And there is also Orwell's telescreen uh, implementation by uh, CIA um, and Samsung. So basically, they, they hacked smart, uh, Samsung smart TVs to record people um, silently. All right. So now, 
hacking voice biometrics, what do we need to do? Uh, the target is a mobile, uh, mobile integration, mobile app integration of voice biometrics, IVR integration of voice biometrics, uh, and they both claim that there is a replay attack detection. So we need to first gather the voice, uh, do some vocal isolation, then we need to fuzz it so that we identify the thresholds of replay detection and change it enough. Uh, and then we need to do impersonation, so automate the requests, uh, you know, called a thousand times to IVR, no, nobody will do it manually. So how good is go a good microphone? For the initial research, I was using Nexus 5 and the standard journalist microphone, which is Sony ECM. Uh, for the research, I also bought few, uh, bought, bought few other microphones. Aldi microphone, oh, this is non-directional Aldi microphone. Now it's directional. <laughs> It's actually quite surprisingly well, uh, like good at um, gathering voices. Uh, this, is, this is actually, this one is the Rode uh, video mic. And you can actually hire, uh, rent Rode NTG uh, microphone for 700, uh, which is worth $700. You could rent it for $40 a day. And I'm trying to um, contact some companies which record uh, audio at football stadiums and they're using this clover mic worth 3000 is basically a parabolic uh, 26 inches microphone and uh, recording with that that would be cool right so let's do vocal extraction uh, we've got voice trials recorded from five meters with this microphone if we just re uh, play them to the system uh, it will not catch the voice because the, the voice was so uh, not so loud right so we need to amplify the voice uh, by using few techniques, basically really basic techniques in Outer City, uh, by isolating the voice, um, reducting the noise, uh, some high and low pass filters, amplification, adding some legit nose, uh, noise, uh, and the, the parameters, I wouldn't present any parameters because it basically differs per, uh, per the voice biometric solution. Um, so. Yeah, some vendors claim that this is cooperative because if I can record somebody from five meters, uh, this, uh, there is a cooperation. I don't see much cooperation there. Uh, and some solutions rely on noise. So if you replay the voice and the voice is changed, but the noise is not changed, it will detect uh, a replay, right? So this is how, uh, it's not so easy. So this is a recording from two meters. And this definitely won't be catched by solution. And this is with vocal isolation. This is video mic from two meters. And the same we can do with uh, five meters. This is video mic recording with the from five meters. And vocal isolation. And this is enough to pass to the voice biometric system. All right. So we did some voice recording. We did the vocal isolation. Now we need to fuzz the voice to identify the thresholds. What are the thresholds? Basically, let's say this is the original recording. If we modify voice just a little bit, there is a replay attack detected threshold. There is a threshold for a correct voice authentication because it has to accept situations where somebody has a sore throat or is, has just a bad day, right? And there is some thresh, small threshold when the system is unsure. And of course, all the rest is incorrect. So what we are trying to do is we tr we're trying to uh, modify the voice so that it fits the correct threshold, but not the replay detected. All right, so for fuzzing the voice, I used SOX. That's a standard Linux uh, package. Linear functions are perfect for bypassing replay detection because it should affect the replay, but it should not affect the biometrics, which is rocket science. They're working on not on wavelength, they're working on spectrum, and basically they claim that changing pitch, changing speed wouldn't affect voice authentication. It is true, it won't, but it will affect the replay detection. So uh, I came up with five different modifications. Uh, three levels of noise reduction, 13 levels of uh, changing the pitch, nine levels of changing the speed, then the random pauses and some background noise. 
when you multiply how many uh, cases we, we, we've got here, uh, this is 38,000 recordings. It's almost two days of co constant two days of audio. So what we need to do is choose which will be the best, and we can try maybe 100, maybe 300. I'll just quickly show you. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. So this is true that after a few days, oh, that, that moved. After a few days, your, your colleagues will ask you to work from home. Uh, I'll show you in a second why. And after a week, you will answer your phone, uh, my voice is my password. Why? Because of that. The assessment was, one of them was, I think, 15 days. The second was 12 days. For 12 days, you're doing authentication. My voice is my password. Authentication. My voice is my password. Authentication. Yeah, another one. Authentication. My voice is my password. Authentication. My voice is my password. Yeah, so uh, th this, is <laughs> this is quite, uh, this becomes complicating. All right. So I came up with this solution of reducing the number or the, the number of calls which we have to do. Uh, basically, 38,000 recording comes from multiplying all these different levels of parameters, changing the parameters, right? Uh, I came up with the solution that if, for example, the system will not accept changing the voice, let's say 20% of the pitch, it will not accept any other combination of 25% and any other combination of the uh, rest of the parameters, right? So what we need to do is identify thresholds, maximum thresholds for separately for each parameter. Uh, this is maximum 50 trials. Then we determine the maximum threshold for a se separate parameter change. So let's say the system will accept 15% uh, of the pitch change. Then we choose three levels. It will be 15%, 7.5%, and zero. We'll have three levels of change for each of five parameters. This is just uh, 15 trials, right? Uh, then we do combinations of these parameters at three levels, only on the maximum threshold for a separate parameter, and we try to join them together. Now we multiply only uh, five parameters at three levels, which is around 250 trials. This is doable. And once the system responds if it was accepted or not, we choose the most successful trials, and with replay detection on, we try to trash these selected thresholds uh, and select a few best values for the, basically for the vulnerability. So in the end, the vulnerability should be, uh, well, if you change the speed by this value, the pitch by this value, and uh, you add this kind of noise, the system should have more or less stable vulnerability to accept those voice trials, even though they were uh, replayed. All right, if we cannot ask, uh, ask the vendor to turn off the replay detection, uh, we can just re-enroll each time. This takes time, but it's, it's, it's enough. So a reconnaissance how this works. Uh, so we have the enrollment, right? And then I figured out that there are many phrases which the, the vendors implement in, in their solutions. So sometimes it's my voice is my password. Sometimes it's sign me into the XYZ bank. And my name is ABC and my voice is my password. Can anyone see a problem of of the cho how the choice of the phrase affects the security? Anybody? All right, so let's say at one bank, the, uh, the phrase is my voice is my password, and in the second bank as well. If somebody is able to compromise the first system, most probably he will be able to leak, download the voice trials, and try them, basically try them on the sec in the second bank, right? So this is not unique per client and per provider. Uh, sign me into the XYZ bank is a little bit better, but still you can do a horizontal brute force. Uh, my name is ABC and my voice is my password. It's still a data leak risk, so, uh, so it can happen that you can steal somebody's uh, voice trials from one system and try it in another one. What would be the best one? The best one would be my name is ABC and at XYZ bank, my voice is my password. From the functional point of view, nobody would accept that. So then in the IVR channel, uh, we need to call the info line, dial the customer ID on the DTM, as DTMF tones, and say the phrase. The system says that either it is a success, uh, or it's incorrect, 
or a replay detected and then ends the call, or the system is not sure and asks to repeat. Uh, and then there is an authentication mobile app. And I have to admit that mobile application integrations are much more secure simply because the apps are already paired with accounts, so the horizontal brute force is not possible. And there are the rules for working uh, for the phrases are the same. So it turns out that there are a lot of challenges. If, if I'm testing a system and there is an SQL injection, I, I put a payload, I get a response, and I'm 100% sure that the system is vulnerable, right? The same with RCE. What happens here? I, I submit a vulnerability, and the vendor says, no, no, you made a weak enrollment. And actually, one of the vendors uh, detects weak enrollments, and it claims that there are 30% of them. So you need to test many times, and even if you find a vulnerability, you have to confirm it on uh, using different enrollments, multiple enrollments, right? There are also some machine learning mechanisms, right? So the more out proper authentications are made in, in months' time, the system is more sure about the voice, right? All right. Uh, so, of course, we try to repeat the attack many times. But actually, the vulnerability, if, if, the, if the vulnerability is possible to exploit only one time, that's good enough. So a second challenge. Uh, we create an account, we enroll our voice, and I'm, it's only me I'm testing it. I'm trying to open a second account with my voice. And the question is, is it possible? Maybe we need more voices. Third challenge. Uh, I create the account, I, I, tra I transform the voice with some function, and it works. Sorry, in the first case, it doesn't work, so it says that it's not your voice. But after I changed another voice of my colleague with that transformation, the system accepts it. So we need even more voices because some, some thresholds, some changes, may work only for specific voices, not for all of them, right? Next challenge. Uh, so we've got a light modification that will be small f and a strong modification. Uh, first, we we, we send the light modification, the system detects the replay because it doesn't differ much from the original recording. Then we pass the strong modification and the system detects the replay because it doesn't differ much from the light modification which was supplied a minute before. But if we supplied the strong modification first time, it will be, it will be a success. So the previous authentication affects the future ones because there is a database of recordings so that the system is able to do replay uh, detection. Right? So uh, if it's possible, try to ask the vendor to turn off the, replay, uh, the uh, learning mode so that you're able to test the thresholds uh, separately. All right, the next one. Oh, this is actually good. This was actually reported as a vulnerability. So we created an account. We transformed the voice we, uh, and enrolled it. We transformed the voice with some function. We passed the modification, and the system said, I'm unsure, please repeat. And in the same call. The system asks, please say one more time. And you're saying one more time, the system is still unsure. But during the third try in the same call, the system will accept it. Why? Because simply to increase the false rejection rate, the vendors decided to make life a little bit easier in the third try. And if somebody's trying, yeah, my voice is my password, really? Then it will try to a little bit lower the thresholds and allow more, more uh, voice trials to accept, right? So different trials during one call. Uh, so in some solutions, it's, it's worth to attack in the third try. All right, uh, the last challenge. So we've got light modification and strong modification. We pass the strong modification. Then we try the light modification many, many, many times. It's always a failure. And then we try to repeat the first scenario with the strong modification, but it doesn't work. And it's not a replay. The system says it's incorrect. Why? Because there may be a dif different threshold, not during one call, but for one user in general, during many calls. And this is basically a mechanism, something like a brute force detection. So we have to identify thresholds on mule accounts, and then confirm the vulnerabilities on new users. Oh, one more. So we pass the recording. It's a success. Uh, I mentioned that. We modify the vocal, but we leave the same noise and the system can d detect the replay based on the noise itself. That's why we need to also change the noise. Uh, each noise has some characteristics. Actually, I've heard that uh, like some uh, nation state ser uh, secret services, they're actually, from the videos on the internet, they're able to locate people based on some uh, 
noise in the, in the background, right? So they, they, it may happen that they detect. All right, after bypassing all these challenges and, and supplying those voice trials, it turns out that you're, I was able to do a more or less stable replay attack uh, bypass in a standard environment. The environment was standard, so like the thresholds were set to normal. Of course, they've got, uh, they've got basically different thresholds. They can set that the system is super tight, but then the false rejection rate will be high, or they can set the system will be loose and, and the false acceptance will be high. All right, the, the environment was medium loud. The process was hacked, so like, let's say the modifications were sent in the last step. Uh, it was more or less a gray box, so we were allowed to change a few things. And there was no IDS, so the, uh, we, didn't need, uh, we didn't need to use multiple voice, like many voices, and re-enroll each time. So a little bit easier task, but still, definitely, you're able to replay this process and bypass, I think, any voice by metric with 1% uh, equal error rate. OK, so the last step of, the, of hacking voice biometrics, of pen testing them, is impersonation. If I was about to call IVR 100 times or 300 times in, in 10 days' time, it would be impossible. So we need to automate it. I used Skype for Pi. It was not perfect, not, not really stable, not really automated. Uh, Skype for Pi is a library which basically allows to write a few scripts in Python and uh, turn on the Skype window, which basically in newer versions of Skype, but it's, it's complicated. Uh, it's good enough, it's easy to integrate, but currently I would, I would suggest using other VoIP uh, solution. Uh, and there was a big and diff variable noise in, in the Skype, uh, uh, in the Skype um, connections. But is it bad or is it good? It's, it basically works as adding a different level of noise, which we are already doing during the voice passing, right? Uh, so another VoIP solution, we can also like develop some mobile app, use a jack-jack cable, uh, cable and reprogram the audio input and output. Well, I, is, I used uh, Skype for Pi, and I used the uh, Bash plus Python plus Pavo control. So I turned off my physical microphone, I relayed the audio output to the Scout audio input, and the other way, so audio output from Skype was uh, supplied to the microphone. And in this case, I was able, by supplying a command, a play, uh, I, I would basically play a recording to the Skype and a record we collect from Skype uh, was to, to d detect what, this is, what was the response. Dialing the DTMF tones, that's quite easy. Basically, you, you have to uh, generate a few uh, wave files. Uh, that's, that's interesting. So you have to collect the responses. And you can use, of course, some API. If you've got API access, that's perfect, like mobile application, that's perfect. But what if, what if not? You, you, based on the system saying authentication rejected, authentication accepted, you have to say what happened. So you can do some speech recognition, actually. Uh, you can use some free or non-free uh, voice recognition technologies, like Google Cloud or Amazon. Uh, but I did a simple response length analysis trick. So I came up that different responses have different lengths. So authentication rejected was the shortest one, like two seconds, then let's say three seconds and four seconds. Uh, one comment in SOX allowed to uh, cut the noise and basically calculate how long was the server response. Uh, and based on that, I, I basically chose wh what was the system response. All right. Uh, and this is, the, this is the set of comments to calculate the length, which is here. All right. So the attack process, we, we've got all the tools. We've got uh, the ideas and voice trials. So we just need to take the next fast, vo fast voice print, call the number, dial the DTMF tones, play this voice print, uh, collect the response. If the response is, let's say, unsure, please repeat. Uh, we need to decide which voice print and end the call. Easy. Mobile applications, uh, as I said, they're a little bit more secure because the um, application is already paired with the account. But there are a lot of vulnerabilities in uh, mobile API. So for example, in this case, the audio was sent in a multi-part post request. And there was a second parameter called f. And f was 44,000. What can it be? Well, frequency. So there was a 2, two megabyte um, file limit. But if you passed f is 1, f equals 1, the system tried to, I don't know, create a WAV file or play this recording using one hertz frequency, which basically does the system because one hertz frequency on two megabyte file was thousands of hours. 
So yeah, often voice biometrics are implemented as a separate box. Uh, the, vo the box is developed by the third party, so we don't control the software development lifecycle there, security. Uh, HTTPS re requests often have a different endpoint, so the security of these endpoints, cipher cho choice, or, uh, or basically a man-in-the-middle attack is possible because the solution may not uh, detect, uh, verify the certificate. So I suggest that the voice authentication sessions should be distinguished in the, let's say, in the online banking that this session was authenticated using voice. So let's allow this guy only make wire transfers to the trusted beneficiaries, not to all. All right, the summary. Uh, I always repeat that a pen test without threat modeling is bug bounty hunting. And really, if you do a proper threat modeling on these solutions, you're able to find vulnerabilities just during the reconnaissance phase without touching the code or touching the solution. Uh, yeah, analyze the business assumptions. Uh, so when the thresholds are changed, try to pick the test scenarios. Uh, ask to turn off the learning mode. Ask to turn off replay detection to identify thresholds faster. Um, identify thresholds on one account and attack the other. That's basically to uh, bypass the learning mode. Uh, do test with noise cancellation and without because some of the solutions, as I said, may detect those uh, replay, that replay of, of the noise. And yeah, as I said, it's, it's not a bad idea. It's not a good idea either. But it should be tested thoroughly. Um, and the final thought, well, solutions integrated in mobile apps require to be paired. IVR does not. That's currently with current maturity level of uh, science behind voice biometrics, I would suggest first implementing this in mobile apps and maybe then moving this to IVR. All right, I am working on the NOAA cheat sheet, uh, which will define the security requirements for voice biometric solutions. Uh, if you know any vendors or uh, if you are a buyer of such solutions, I'll be happy to have a chat. Um, the, the draft is not available anywhere yet because I'm trying to cooperate with vendors as well. Uh, basically, uh, this presentation, th they wouldn't like this presentation to be uh, publicly available, right? Uh, this is basically um, affecting their business, right? So I'm trying to work with them to uh, come up with uh, security requirements which are acceptable from security consultant point of view and their point of view, so what is doable. Uh, if you're, if you're um, interested in any help, uh, le just let me know. All right, Colt will be soon at my GitHub. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, and if you need any materials or this presentation, just drop me an email. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Um, we're about out of time, so I think you said if people have questions, you're around to Yeah, I'll be here after. around here. Yep. Okay, um, I just want to present you with this uh, Osir oh. 2017 <laughs> nice, board, thank you. Yeah, and appreciation of you coming to speak. Great, thank you. Um, another round of applause, please, for Jacob. Um, so we have an hour uh, break for lunch right now from 12.20 to 1.20. Um, and then if you come back here after, it's Andrew Jameson talking about biometrics as well. So please don't forget to rate the sessions on your apps if you have them. And have a good lunch.